Reese probably would have faked a trip right there or something coming up those stairs. For those of you who don't know me, I am Reese's uncle, Phil, Jed's oldest brother. I have prayed for the strength today and have the honor to share with you all of Reese's life sketch. The stories of Reese that have shown the amazing being he was and the lessons and legacy that he will leave behind. Even for Reese, even before Reese joined us into this world, there were signs he was going to be larger than life by the size of Katie's belly. <laughs> this little guy was so big. And in Nampa, Idaho, on Tuesday, November 5th, 2002, at 4.03 p.m., Reese was born. Eight pounds, 14 ounces, probably seven pounds of shoulders. He had huge shoulders. That little guy completed the family of Jed, Katie, and Steel. He was so cute, like Aunt Casey said. He was the cutest, chubbiest baby with a smile from the beginning that was unique. Once that little guy started smiling, he never stopped. Being born with a small case of spina bifida, Reese underwent his first surgery only a month into his young life. His mom never leaving his side for four days, sure that he would pull through. Surgeries never slowed this kid from smiling and his determination to grow. He was born into the perfect family for him, always there to motivate and challenge him. They never pitied him and held the space that Reese would pull through, regardless of what the experts said. And boy, did he just want to keep up with his big brother and cousins. Regardless of any recovery that little body was undergoing, Reese was going to keep up, if not beat you. Yep, from the start, he had the shoulders, the smile, the family. And if that wasn't enough, that kid was born to eat. I think he was eating steak before he even had teeth. <laughs> There wasn't a plate he wouldn't clear. He loved food. I can remember when he was two or three, he'd stay at my house and I'd wake up and say, hey, Reesey boy, what do you want for breakfast? And if you knew Reese when he was little, he talked with his R's were like W's. So he would say, I want quapes, Uncle Phil. And this kid knew the recipe. He's like, three eggs, a cup of milk, a cup of flour, and a stick of melted butter. I'm like, all right. And every time I make crepes now, that I don't even need the recipe. I hear his little voice telling me how to make them. Crepes were one of his favorites for sure, but not sure it took place of the highly nutritious cold cereal diet he stuck to. Three to eight bowls a day maybe. Dedicated he was. Good thing his parents and grandparents kept a full supply of cereal. He wasn't only dedicated to his love for food. Even from the early years, Reese was dedicated to family and friends. Always challenging us, but like Grandma Connor put so recently, Reese kept up with his brother and cousins no matter what their adventure, and would pass them up, and would turn to them and encourage them to keep up. If you were sad, he would turn that sadness into happiness. Reese had a gift. So many of us never have one of compassion and love for everyone. Even from his early days, Reese made people feel welcome. I love the story from our, from Aunt Deanna from Texas. And excuse me if I go into a horrible Texas accent, but I just love Deanna, so. Reese making her feel, one of my favorites was when he was a toddler, we would go camping each summer. I was a Texan, redneck roots, among the Idahoan family. However, Reese helped me feel right at home. He would drop his drawers and go pee anywhere. <laughs> Wherever he wanted. Katie, his mom, would jump right up, run over, trying to correct his habit. I, however, loved it. Being from Texas, that's exactly what my kinfolk would have done. <laughs> Reese simply needed to go, and he did so. Each time, this made me smile big and made my heart happy. His childlike wonder and carefree nature allowed him to be who he was without who he wasn't getting in the way. Reese embraced who he was freely from the beginning. And it was the spirit that empowered many of us to do the same. It was that spirit Reese made that made us happy to be around him. And soon he was off to school where he came to meet many more friends and many of you are here today dressed up in colors and that is just amazing, he would love that. For what, from what I've heard, many of his friends, Reese was known for genuinely caring, accepting for who you were, and would always leave you with a smile, if not a heartfelt laugh. 
Reese loved school more, th more for the sports than studies. Sorry, teachers. Basketball was hands down his favorite. When he was younger, he would always outside shooting, trying to beat Steele or his cousins or friends in a game. But Reese loved sports, all sports, regardless of his limitations with his legs. He'd play any sport he could, whether it was a wheelchair, in a wheelchair with his braces or crutches, or on his knees. He just wanted to be in the game. And he played with the heart and compassion and passion of the pros. I can remember as a little kid in Y ball, I only watched him a couple of times, but he would make a basket and he would turn to the crowd and he'd do the goggles and shoot the crowd up, you know, he just such a ham out there on the court. It was so fun to watch. But Reese, oh, where am I here? If there's a lesson watching Reese play sports, it is that we all have limitations. Reese's were a little bit easier to see, but it's whether we decide to let them stop us or motivate us, and Reese always chose to rise above. Even when he was forced by doctors, his mom or Grandma Connie to stay in the wheelchair after surgeries, he still rose above it. Reese would climb the stairs at my mom's house in the wheelchair. To this day, I don't think we know anyone who can climb stairs in a wheelchair. <laughs> Reese would always practice his wheelchair skills in the driveway at Grandma's house and scare her to death. And Grandma always said, if there was ever a college degree maneuvering a wheelchair, Reese would have had the masters. He was always pushing the limits, as Grandma Connie remembers. There wasn't a cast Reese wouldn't break or wear out. She thinks that is why he loved bright colors. He'd get a different one with each cast that he had to replace. Perhaps each new bright color was a silent victory for him. Reese taught us that it, if life isn't always going to deal you the best hand, it is how you play that hand that counts. From the start, he smiled and worked hard on what he could instead of playing into what he could not do. Reese taught us that when Reese could be on the court, couldn't be on the court, he was the biggest fan on the sidelines. I can remember coming to games like Al said, running up and down in these goofy outfits and you could just find Reese in an instant out there on the court. Sorry for a lot of you Falcon fans that you had to see a lot of spandex on Reese. <laughs> Hadlock campouts were also a guaranteed stage with our skit nights. He, Hannah, and Kennedy would usually take the weekend to roll out one of one that would steal the crowd. I think one of the Oscar winning ones was when he was a blind hairdresser. He should, you should have seen Hannah and Kennedy's hairs by the end of that one. Not a dry eye in the crowd. But even while entertaining us, he still used this platform to lift our spirits. Cousin Lexi remembered one family camp out. He, Hannah, and Kennedy serenaded her with a song, Just the Way You Are, by Bruno Mars. She broke into tears. She later shared that, th that they had no idea how much she needed to be told what they had sang to her that night. He loved picking people up when they felt down. When he was around six or seven at skit night, he busted out the complete song of I Want to Be a Billionaire so frickin' bad. I could never hear that song without thinking of Reese. And you know what? I honestly believe that he was, would have done that. He was a kid walking, he was a kid was walking businessman from the time he could talk. Cousin Mackenzie remembers once they were younger. He had their cousins were going around grandma's neighborhoods with apricots and any snacks, popsicles they could find of grandma's stash to go around the neighborhood selling whatever they could. And they were all supposed to take turns going up to the door and knock. And of course, everyone chickened out but Reese and he'd go up there with his little sales pitch and try to sell something. I don't think he ever sold anything, but he still had that determination. Although he didn't let the apricot business set him back because four summers ago, he, Hannah, Kennedy, Lily, and Riley were at my house when they got the idea to earn some money from our neighbors washing dogs. Within an hour, all my neighbors had clean pups and tw they had 20 bucks for, for junk food at the grocery store down the road. But he was getting smarter. I heard from some of his buddies that he was going to into the lawn care business for, with some of you, although this time he was just going to set up the accounts and his buddies would do the work. 
He was calling the business Lawn in Order. I could sit here and share memories we made with Reese, but we recently got a letter from one of his teachers that I think summarizes it perfectly. The world is a duller place without Reese Hadlock in it, and yet for having shared part of it with him for so, so short a time, each of us is better and brighter person today. I know I am not the only teacher in the Valley View School District to say that he was my favorite student. Reese just effort, effortlessly entered so many of our hearts with his affable joy, his genuine pure affection for everyone, and his infectious humor. He was that kid who had a perfect quip with the, a sideways smile in class, one that never degraded anyone or a lesson at hand, but raised everyone's spirit in a second. He was the kid who had admired fiercely and quietly, baffled at his lion-hearted boy, at this lion-hearted boy who managed to smile and joke after his tenth surgery in 12 years, perpetually in crutches, those explicit leg braces, or his wheelchair. He was the kid who could convince a group of other kids to do something fearlessly without self-consciously worrying about looking like a fool. The unaffected hype man, the kind of guy who sang karaoke with you right after you swore you'd never do that again and make you feel great for have done it. He was the kid who would wear ridiculous hot pink shorts, not to get attention, but to share some kind of joke that no one knew, but everyone could be a part of. He was the kid that in front, was the front man of the flash mob in sixth grade talent show that somehow formed from an impromptu dance off in the homeroom into a full blown choreographed performance because there was no doubt it was going to be fabulous memory for everyone. He was that kid that spontaneously dressed up in the stinky old mascot costume or sold popcorn at the basketball games because why not? It sounds like fun. I still like, still play pretend and laugh at yourself. He was a kid who sobbed on my shoulders on his last day of middle school, standing up from his wheelchair to hug me as I struggled to convey that I cared for him deeply, that I missed him more and he'd probably miss me. And yet, he was the kid who came back to see me time and time again to check in and so we could laugh together as if he'd never left. Reese was the kid you wish all students could be. He was the kid you wish your own kids could be. He was and is someone everyone somehow needed. His spirit was contagious. He made you feel as if you were in something together like the embodiment of a tiny wink at the end of a perfect inside joke. He made you funnier, cooler, wittier, braver. Reese, you were and always will be one of my favorite people in this world. And though the world is duller, we are not. Though this pain of losing you is almost unbearable, we carry it willingly because of how deeply you lie within our hearts. Each of us are blessed to have known such a rare and radiant soul as you. I love you, kiddo. I will carry that small, indestructible, effervescent piece of you that you shared with me always in my heart. Be at peace. Love you, Reese. <laughs>